Hi team, so today we are going to see how to install Olama within a Docker image and then use it with Autogen framework. Autogen as you know is used to create agents and typically we use OpenAI models but what we are going to do is we are going to use Olama and the reason why this video is special is because I am going to install everything within a container within a Linux image so that it can be reused so again it's pretty mouthful but what we are going to do is we are going to use debian 12 image and then we are going to install olama within it and then what we are going to do is we are going to invoke some agents inside it and see how does it perform now one thing which i am trying to do differently uh, today is i am going to use visual studio code dev containers which is sort of extension for running you know Linux images so with dev containers within Windows machine you can run Linux images and that's definitely very useful so let's get started with all the setup so the only prerequisite is you should have docker installed and since I'm using Windows machine I have docker already installed if you are using some other machines it's pretty easy to install docker so what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my particular folder where all the setup is there. So I already have all the setup already available and I'm just selecting the folder. And if you see, I have all the setup which installed all the dependencies and what I have to do is I just have to run. So for example, I'm going to reopen in container. And I'm going to explain while this process is going on exactly what I did. So basically what you do is you use dev container. So while you are using dev container, what you need to do is you need to specify some configuration within file. So for example, uh, you know, what kind of image you are using for the Docker, are there any more dependency and all that all you can definitely do within dev containers. So if you see what I have done here is, I will just show. So I have this uh, dev container dot JSON and this is exactly how, you know, you can install all the components. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm just specifying it few things. For example, I'm just specifying it a Docker file here. So, you know, if you see there is a Docker file build, there is a post create command where I'm, you know, calling some script. And if you see my Docker file, I'm using some specific image, which is, you know, uh, exactly uh, Debian 12. And this is a Microsoft flavor for Debian 12. When I say Microsoft flavor, this specific image Microsoft has installed few additional libraries on top of the base Debian 12. So that is the difference. So I installed this, uh, you know, Docker file. So I'm just using that. And then what I'm trying to do is I'm installing a extension. If you see this extension, which is tools AI.Jupyter. And again, this is for, you know, running Jupyter file. And the other thing which is very, very important is I'm using something called install dependencies. So once I invoke this container, then what I do is I run these commands, which are there in this bash file. And these are doing nothing, but they are, you know, installing everything which is required to set up Olama as well as you know few other things which are required to install the library so basically if you see the first command what it's trying to do is it is installing olama specific version then the second command what it's trying to do is it's running olama and third is nothing but you know sleeping for five seconds fourth is actually pulling an actual model called llama 3.2 and i i believe it's a uh you know smaller model and that's what it's going to do and then what we are going to do is we are just uh, you know installing everything which is there in requirement.txt so if you see you know all the files which are there we are just installing it uh, uh, with requirement.txt so basically the advantage of using this whole configuration with the dev container is you have everything ready within a linux container and actually i am running debian so in case I need to deploy it to production, it's pretty much easy. I have everything stored. Definitely I can make some changes. Like for example, rather than using this post create command, I can put everything in Docker file. That's also I can do. But the 
essential advantage is whatever environment I'm going to run on Windows, same environment I'm going to run, uh, you know, in the production also. So since I'm using Debian 12 images, if I need to put it in production and I'm, use De I'm using Debian 12, the step will be definitely much more easier. So I'm just developing locally for Debian and going to use it for productizing also. So this is exactly what we have done. So dev container dot JSON, which actually references a Docker file, which contains a base image, base Linux image, which we are using. And again, what we are trying to do is we are, you know, installing, uh, you know, some dependencies, which means some uh, Python uh, libraries as well as running the Olama as well as pulling a Olama model. And while it's uh, uh, downloading, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause. And once it's finished, I'm going to C code and code is pretty much simple. It's not as complicated, but the idea is you have everything running for you already and it's already available for you. So you just need to, you know, focus on code rather than setup. So now my setup is done. So let me see if we, if I can run few things. So basically again, uh, the idea was to see exactly if my, all the dependencies are already ready. So one uh, apology, I said it's, uh, you know, uh, Debian 12, but what I meant to say was Python 3.12 rather than Debian 12. So if I run the Python minus minus was version as such, so what I'm going to see is I'm going to see the exact Python version. And if I give you the next command, which is cat etcs os release, what it is going to do is it's going to tell me exactly which Linux version I'm working on. So if you see it's bullseye, I believe it's uh, Debian 11, not Debian 12. But the essential idea is we are running this specific version of Debian along with Python 3.12. If I need to see whether my, you know, Olama is working or not, I can just see, you know, uh, if it's available, I just can type within my command Olama, you know, minus V and it says it's working. And I can also see the list of all the, uh, you know, models that are already available and see if they are installed or not. So if you see, those are all installed. So I have Python, sorry, I have Llama 3.2, which is the latest version within Olama. The uh, smallest uh, model I, I believe is 1 billion and this is I think 2 billion model. So Llama 3.2 model is available and this I can see if I can run with Autogen. So my all, so the idea is my, the, my, all the setup is already available here and let's try to run few code. So let's see the Python notebook. So we have this Python notebook open and what I can do is I can run all. So I can try to run all. If you see it already selected the correct Python version, which is 3.12. So which is good. And if I'm just seeing, you know, a uh, few commands as such to check whether it's Linux or not. Yeah, it's giving me, you know, the system as user local. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to load few things from the ENV file. So if you see this ENV file, I have open AI keys available. So I'm just loading that open AI key. And the reason why I'm using open AI keys, I just wanted to demonstrate first to run the autogen with OpenAI and then switch to Olama. So that's what I'm going to do. Then I'm just doing one thing, which is I'm just instantiating GPT-4 Mini, and here is where OpenAI API key is available and everything is in dot environment file. So if you see this dot environment file, all configuration is there. So what I'm trying to do is I'm just asking a very, very basic question, which is what is the meaning of life answer in one line. So this is a very, very, simple uh you know bot as such so what it's trying to do is it's just like you know trying to have a conversation so if you see the answer so the question which i asked was what is the meaning of life answer in one line with gpt 40 it is saying the meaning of life is subjective and varies for each individual and so on so it was able to give me the answer now what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch now with olama so first of all, I'm just seeing whether Olama is working or not. So by default, it runs on 114.34 port. So I just said, you know, call this command as such. So it says Olama is running. And then what I did was uh, I just try to configure the Olama as such. So if you see my, you know, LLM configuration file, 
I specify what model I am using. I am running only one model, which is 3.2. So within, uh, you know, my uh, installation instruction, if if you see, I just pulled Llama 3.2, which I believe is a smaller model. And then, you know, with some configuration, like which specific port and all I'm running. And again, I can put it into environment file also, but for now, I just put it here. And this is just a configuration change, which is needed as such to switch to the Olama part rather than using the open AI uh, models as such. So this is what I did. And again, I asked the same question. What is the meaning of life answer in one line? And it gave me some answer, which is the meaning of life is subjective and carry and can vary from person to person. The only difference was in the first case, we use GPT-4 O mini. In the second case, we are using O Llama and it is using Llama 3.2. And this has been served from this specific port. So pretty simple example, but definitely we can go beyond this simple, you know, conversational agent to doing something much more complex using Olama. Uh, so that's it for today. Thanks team. Thanks for watching.